I'm delighted to be in the studio this morning with Mr. Francis Wangusi. He's the Director General of the Communications Authority of Kenya, and he's here at ITU to take part in the focus group on digital financial services. Thank you very much, Mr. Wangusi, for finding some time to talk to us. Thank you for inviting me to. Kenya is actually probably the star player in this in this field, isn't it? Uh, an amazing track record in promoting digital financial services, uh, leveraging new technologies. You pioneered the M-Pesa system, which is famous now around the world. Uh, what do you think was the secret of the success? Why did Kenya have such an outstanding success uh, when other countries haven't actually uh, achieved as much as you so far? Well, uh, uh, first of all, when the concept of mobile money uh, uh, services uh, dawned on our players and the government, I think uh, there was a, a little more bravery from both the government and the players to at least start it, despite not knowing the risks uh, that are going to be involved and whether or not it's going to succeed. So, uh, but uh, uh, we did uh, by agreeing to give it a pilot of one year and also limit the amount of money that was going to be carried through the financial platform uh, in order to find out uh, whether there is viability at the end of the tunnel. That limit uh, then maybe made people feel a little bit uh, more reassured that nothing really... Y nothing major really happens and uh, just in case, of course, uh, the whole pilot project bungles. Mm. Um, but uh, I think after one year, uh, we had uh, an amazing results uh, that really uh, we were just only uh, forced to start developing financial regulations, financial and, uh, of course, ICT regulations around the, the platform in order to encourage it to move further. I think that's but very interesting. You know, I actually asked uh, uh, the minister from Somalia if he thought the lack of regulation was a hindrance or actually helped and it sounds like you might argue that it helped by not having a very strong framework to start with. You were able mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. introduce the service. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think, yes, uh, when the service matures, uh, the need for regulations and policy direction becomes very important. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think at the start, uh, had we put that in place, it could, could have been the uh, big hindrance towards the rapid growth of the service. Um, uh, we saw that uh, uh, when uh, there was uh, that lacuna of regulation, uh, the, the mobile uh, operator who, who was responsible for this pilot leveraged a lot in order to see that the services is, uh, succeeds. And also to avoid a number of risks that you know, could have made the government probably think otherwise in terms of the al allowing the service to continue. But as, as, as I said, one of the safeguards that we put in place was to limit the amount of money that was to be transacted by an individual on that platform. So uh, that helped us. Uh, we found that uh, quite a number of uh, people you know, there was quite a, a, a number of transfers of, of revenue from person to person uh, growing up very much, especially from towns to the rural areas, because most of the people who work in towns have their relatives in the rural areas. And before then, it used to be very difficult uh, to send money uh, to people in the rural areas uh, when they needed help. Uh, sometimes it will take as long as a week. But you see, with the speed of uh, the, this, this kind of uh, transaction, uh, which could just take a matter of seconds, many people who were sorting out their problems with their rural communities take, took just an easy time to be able to do that. And that inspired the rapid growth of this service. Did you have to actively promote the service when you first introduced it, or was it really word of mouth? Well, I, ideally, the, I wouldn't want to say that the service was promoted so much. Mm -hmm. At least there was sensitization, uh, and particularly with a service provider. But immediately people picked it up and saw the convenience. Mm -hmm. I think the promotion of the service was done by the people themselves. Yes. We talked uh, a little bit already about the regulatory framework. Now, mm -hmm. the telecom sector and the financial sector are both highly regulated mm -hmm. sectors. Mm -hmm. um, financial services would normally be under the uh, uh, under the auspices yeah. of perhaps the central yeah. bank Bankers. or something like that. Yes, yes. Uh, how are you working out a, a regulatory framework that balances both the, the mm -hmm. telecoms regulation side mm -hmm. and the financial side? One, one thing we realized that uh, for the success of this service, both 
the ICT regulator and uh, the financial regulator must work together. And that uh, where there were overlaps in responsibilities, then we needed to come together and see how we can be able to collaborate in order to be able to ma uh, make the service a success. As a result of this, uh, there has been no much friction in terms of the decisions the ICT regulator makes uh, in promoting the services or at least making the services secure in one way or the other and what the, uh, the, 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 the Central Bank of Kenya in this particular respect does. Um, in fact, the reason a uh, case in point uh, is that uh, uh, there was uh, 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 a petition or, uh, that, that, that was given by one of the mobile operators uh, not for us to allow the use of the thin, tim, the thin SIM technology mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the mobile money transfer market. Uh, and of course this was as a result of one of the operators having introduced that particular service. Uh, uh, there was really a lot of heat around uh, the determination of uh, uh, of that particular request and uh, both the ICT regulator and the financial regulator worked together. Uh, we sought for various uh, technical advice with regard to the operations of the thin SIM. They also sought to see um, how what financial uh, what implications it might have on the on, on, the, on, the, on the financial uh, security uh, particularly in terms of uh, uh, money laundering and also in terms of operators just maybe uh, undercutting themselves using the same technology. But at the end of it, I think we were satisfied that uh, the thin the theme SIM uh, has the technology similar to any other uh, SIM card and, 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 and therefore the risks are just inherent uh, in thin SIM like they are in any other SIM card. So instead, we moved forward to look for a way of how we can be able to mitigate those risks. And right now, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have hired a consultant who is going to be able to help us uh, be able to provide a regulatory determination on the way forward in, in, in regulating the, the mobile uh, financial services now that there are more players, not just even the thin SIM alone. This would so be looking at a sort of technology neutral uh, approach rather exactly, than linked exactly. to any particular and platform. Uh, yes, and then also help us to come up with medications in terms of risks, regulatory medications that would be able to minimize the risks because of uh, what we are doing right now uh, in encouraging in the operability of various platforms. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you actually in terms of risk, mm -hmm. your uh, success has been so world famous that I imagine it must have attracted the attention of some potential cyber criminals and that's uh, a worry I imagine for you. How do you make sure and mitigate those cyber security risks? One of the things that, uh, and uh, you are very right that um, uh, the, the, the cyber security risks have been prominent, es especially when the service, uh, uh, the service grew. But one of the things that we did was, uh, first of all, to limit the amounts of money that can be transacted by an individual. Uh, this, of course, uh, uh, brought the, the risk appetite to a low level mm -hmm. so that it doesn't uh, allow those who probably might want to be able to take advantage of the, of the service and create maybe a big impact in terms of the risk so that it can discourage people from using it. Mm -hmm. But there are existed risks. The, I think along the, 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 the ecosystem of mobile financial services, you know, right from the banks uh, to the operators of the mobile uh, money transfer or f uh, platforms, and to the agents who are uh, the last people to be able to serve the customers. Uh, we found that there were various risks along the chain. Uh, now, we have tried as much as possible to try and limit those risks. But however, uh, some of the risks which were, on, uh, were unforeseen, like for example what we call the fishing and uh, smishing, or, uh, we, which, which, is, uh, which has been a very common risk uh, for us back, uh, back home there. And we, we have come up with a method of trying to ensure a, a tight uh, a kind of uh, regulations that would enable those who access the service 
to have been properly identified and registered so that uh, whatever SIM card that is being used uh, in the transaction of this service must be with somebody who has been properly identified, who, ha who is within the government registration system. Of course, uh, those who, who come uh, into Kenya from foreign uh, countries and want to use the service within the country, uh, of course we use their passports and we identify them with their passports as, as one of the key components in, uh, in identification process. So this has helped to reduce. But even after saying that, um, the aspect of uh, undemanded laundering, well, is a very wide subject and uh, I don't think we could uh, easily be able to say we have eliminated it. Somehow, um, within Kenya itself, um, one of the experiences we had is that uh, um, s s uh, institutions like prisons, particularly notorious for this, uh, where criminals were using uh, a, n a number of uh, SIM cards, which of course they obtained unlawfully, mm. to be able to threaten people, to send money to them, mm. uh, under the guise that uh, probably they, they are uh, robbers who are at their doorstep. Mm. So give me money, or uh, I break into your house and collect what it's I want. It's almost a kind of mobile protection racket. Exactly, exactly. I think that could be the best word we, I mean, we can use there. Uh, this has been rampant. But then uh, slowly, because we realized this was coming from institutions which are, uh, which are meant to be, uh, to, to be confining criminals, and yet they are encouraging this kind of rackets, uh, I, I think we looked uh, w uh, for a way of, uh, I mean, of how we can collaborate with the police and the prison warders to be able to arrest this. And since we arrested it, I think we don't see it anymore. But it has not had such a significant impact in regarding the growth of mobile money transfer services. When you started in Pesa, uh, it, it began as a fairly simple mm -hmm. banking mm -hmm. system. Now, mm -hmm. do you see it? Do you have a vision for that developing? Are there different areas now that you're looking at? Yes. In fact, several models of uh, mobile financial services, not even just uh, um, uh, the transfer services uh, regarding person to person or person to business or business to business. Uh, now there are various models that have come up. And particularly after banks having realized that uh, part of their customer base is being taken away uh, by, 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 this, uh, by this new service. They are partnering with uh, the mobile network operators in order to be able to provide more brands of this service. We have now mobile banking, my microfinance institutions, uh, which are pro providing loans to small business people, small enterprises, um, uh, are, are using this particular service. We, we have now seen the growth of uh, the insurance industry getting interested in trying to provide the insurance services through these platforms and many others. We have seen, like for example, the transport sector getting so keen in trying to ensure that even the payment of their services is being done through M-Pesa. And even the government itself now uh, has created a platform through which people can pay for the government services on M-Pesa. So this really is an accelerated growth, uh, in my opinion, in the application of mobile money uh, fi uh, financial services in the, in the country. A relatively simple system that's had, it sounds like a huge uh, social and economic uh, exactly, impact. Exactly, exactly. And in fact, you m many major <coughs> Uh, technologies that uh, are still being used are the ones that you know the system was founded on, like the USSD technology. Although right now the uh, the WAP technology has been brought in by a few uh, more companies that we have licensed, particularly those who want to do mobile banking, uh, and 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 I believe that uh, it has worked well. Uh, maybe basically because it is still confined within the country and the rules that we have within the country are good enough to help us be able to avoid and mitigate on a number of risks. Well, congratulations mm. on uh, developing such an excellent yes. world-leading mm. service. Mr. Wanguzi, thank, thank you very you. much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you very much.